I want to recommend a couple of videos. On this channel here, Laugh at First Sight, he's done some interesting interviews, this guy. He's an American guy who goes around interviewing various different people. He, he interviews a lot of people who may be newer boxing fans or you know younger boxing fans or even casual fans might not be aware of in terms of who they are. He interviews a lot of old school veterans from back in the days, old school trainers. He goes around the different gyms and, uh, you know, meets us with associates of Don King. Uh, this individual here, pretty crazy, this dude, by the way. <laughs> um, and in this particular interview here, and this interview here, Kelvin Richardson, which is this guy, says some very interesting things about the technicalities of boxing, the psychology of boxing, etc. In this video, he's talking about how having a good defense actually helps with stamina. Because if you've got a good defense, you can rest behind your defense. Obviously, you need to get in tremendous condition, but sometimes guys who are in tremendous condition, when they panic under pressure, when they don't have a good defense and they've got someone throwing punches at them and they're not comfortable in that situation, what do they do? They either throw punches back because sometimes attack they feel is the best form of defense or they start running around the ring and either approach uses a lot of energy whereas if you develop a good defense where you can stay in the pocket and not get hit when you're standing right in front of your opponent that conserves a hell of a lot of energy and you can go the rounds a lot better you know some people would look at James Tony, for example especially in the latter stages of his career when he was taking on all these young guys and you know sometimes losing these fights but he would go 12 rounds. James Tony was never stopped. So he'd stand in the middle of the ring and he's got guys wailing away at him and he's not running. He's not going nowhere. He's just standing right in front of him, slipping and countering, using the Philly shell, the shoulder roll, as people like to call it. And even though James Tony was obese for some of his, a lot of his fights late on in his career, he was still able to go 12 rounds and people were like, how the hell is he able to do this when he's so out of shape? You know, the guy can go 12 rounds when he's like 30, 40, 50 pounds overweight. And that's because of what this guy, Kelvin Richardson, is talking about. He was so relaxed and his defense was so good or his defense was so good. So because of that, he was so relaxed and therefore he wasn't really expending energy like that. And James Tony was also a tremendous counterpuncher, one of the best counterpunchers I've ever seen. And because he was such a good counterpuncher, he, in many of his fights, was able to bring the punch output of his opponents down. Because, you know, when you're very good at countering, you make your opponent hesitant a lot of the time to throw shots because he knows there's going to be something coming back. So, that's an example right there of how defense with James Tony gave him good stamina because he's got very good defense that makes him very relaxed in the ring because he trusts his defense. He believes in his defense and therefore there's no need to do a whole heap of running around. There's no need to throw a million punches back because he believed in his defense. But as much as you can believe in your defense, I think with that, you need to have a good chin too. And James Tony always had a tremendous chin. He had a great defense, but a tremendous chin. And I mean, even somebody like Floyd Mayweather, who, again, great defense. Floyd wasn't brittle chinned. Floyd had a decent chin. I don't want to say Floyd was iron jawed. I know some of Floyd's hardcore diehard supporters will say, oh, he did have an iron jaw. No, Floyd didn't have an iron jaw, but he had a decent chin. And I remember when Marcus Maidana tagged him, was it in the rematch with a very good right hand in the corner towards the end of the round. And Floyd was hurt, but he took it well, you know? I mean, even against a good example, actually, of somebody maintaining their composure 
and staying relaxed in a precarious situation would be Mayweather against Shane Mosley because Mosley clocked him good in the second round with that right hand several times. Floyd's legs buckled, but Floyd maintained his composure. He maintained his confidence. Even though he was getting rocked, look at his body language. He had the body language of a man who felt like, I'm still the boss. I'm still the boss. Calm that down, Shane. You better calm it down because I'm still the boss in here. That is the body language that he had because he was so confident in his defense. He was just so confident in his own ability in general. But as I say, when, when the, the bullets are flying and you've got all kinds of shots coming at you, if you're confident in your defense and you got to have a decent chin to be able to stand in the pocket like that and slip and roll and counter and, you know, bob a weave, whatever method of defense you use, you got to have a decent chin to do that because you can't make an omelet without cracking an egg. As good as your defense is, you're going to get hit still. There's nobody who can fight at a top level in boxing for years and years and years and not eventually get cracked on the chin with a good one. You're going to get hit at some point, regardless how good your defense is. Uh, so that does have to be said. But still, if you've got that and combine it with a good defense, you can go the round sometimes without even being in the greatest of shape. Bernard Hopkins, another example, an old man who was going 12 rounds with all these young lions. And there's no way he could keep up the same work rate as these younger guys. But because his defense was good, he was able to fiddle his way through a lot of fights. Let's be real. So yeah, I recommend watching this video. It's called Good Defense Helps with Stamina, Kelvin Richardson and Kenya Rainey. This video right here, and this guy knows a lot, right? This guy was in the military as well as, you know, his boxing background. He was in the military and he talks about how in the military, they put you, put you through certain things in training to build up your confidence as a soldier. And he talks about gas mask training and stuff like that. And they basically train you to be calm under pressure, calm, be calm in life threatening situations. That's what they do. And he relates that to boxing. He says it's a similar kind of thing in boxing. You have to put the fighter through certain, in certain situations in order to develop a good defense where they're calm under fire. And because that's what the interviewer asks him is how do you develop a good defense? He says, well, you put the guy in the corner and you get guys to throw shots at him <laughs> until he's comfortable. You know, and in fact, that's what they used to do. That's what Costamato used to do with Mike Tyson. He used to put Mike Tyson in the ring with welterweights and have these welterweights throw shots at Tyson for several rounds and Tyson wasn't allowed to punch back. All he was allowed to do was just, you know, slip and move and all that kind of business. And Tyson said it was tough because if a 140 pounder hits you in the face with their best shot, it's not going to tickle. <laughs> right so despite the fact he was you know 80 pounds or whatever heavier than these welterweights and junior welterweights it's still not a pleasant sensation getting cracked in the face full power by one of these guys and even worse when you're not allowed to get revenge and punch him back you know but that's how Mike Tyson was able to develop his calmness under pressure in terms of when the bullets are flying and opponents are throwing shots at him. Because Tyson was calm. You look at a prime Tyson when opponents are throwing all these punches at him. He remained calm. And again, Mike Tyson, as with many other fighters that had uh, good defense. And I don't want to say Mike Tyson was up there with the best defensive fighters of all time. But as an offensive fighter, Mike Tyson's defense was underrated in his prime. I will say that. And... Again, the way he was able to develop that was what I just described with Costamato. I mean, there were many methods to developing Tyson, uh, Mike Tyson's defense, but one of them was putting him in the ring with all these lighter guys who can punch really fast and have them throw shots at Tyson and he ain't allowed to hit back. So it's, again, building up the confidence of the fighter to have confidence in their defense, you know. So I recommend the videos. I don't agree with what he says about Tyson Fury in this video, though. 
he clearly hasn't watched much of Tyson Fury. He is speaking ignorantly about Tyson Fury here. He says that Tyson Fury is basic, you know, and yeah, he, he just is very dismissive of Fury and dismissive to the point where you can tell this guy hasn't really watched much of Fury. If he watched some actual Fury fights, maybe he's seen the Cunningham fight and he thinks that's why he's basic. He should go watch Fury against Vladimir Klitschko. He should go watch Fury against Kevin Johnson. He should go watch Fury against Derek Chisora. Go watch Fury in those fights and he will surely change his mind on thinking that Tyson Fury is basic. Tyson Fury is the most advanced, the most technically advanced heavyweight in the division right now. At least when it comes to the bigger men. Yeah, there might be some smaller guys who are technically advanced, but if you're talking about heavyweights of six foot four and above, Tyson Fury is the most technically advanced guy. So for this guy to say he's basic, nah, he's speaking from ignorance there. But a lot of the other stuff he says in this video and in this video is very insightful, thought provoking, and some of you who haven't thought about these concepts before, you might learn something from it. So yeah, I definitely recommend these videos. And yeah, let me know what you think. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.